Hey, Foot Clan, look, you've got great ideas. You've got passion projects, but you don't have a website yet? It's 2018. Squarespace exists. Look, you can customize everything. Great looking templates. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. You can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code FOOTBALLERS to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You will not be disappointed. They are beautiful and it's easy. Hey, this is Mark Davis Bryant, a.k.a. Martin McBride. Hey, this is Fred Jackson. This is Hall of Famer Marshall Falk. Hey, this is Alan Robinson. Hey, this is Ray Abdullah. Hey, this is Willie Sneed. Hey, this is David Johnson. Hey, yeah, this is Christian Michael. Hi, this is Eric Dixon, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from Draft.com Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome back. Tuesday, March 27th. Tuesday, welcome back. Oh, it's I love you, Tuesday. So glad you're here. Sometimes the weekends feel long, and it feels like it's been a long time since I've sat in this chair and talked to you, the Foot Clan, and that's it, this weekend was one of those. I feel like a lot of different long things weekend? have happened. Yeah, it feels like a long weekend. Hmm. I blame my kids for that. <laughs> long, long weekend. To be fair, I blame them for basically everything. Yeah. He does. He's always complaining about your children. Those Andy. kids. <laughs> those, those darn kids. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back once more. Great episode. We're going to cover some of the forgotten players who maybe were hurt last year and you did not, uh, you don't remember that they were injured and they still have something to, we'll debate whether they have something else to give heading into 2018. Got that on the show today, a review of Soros. Great quick question. Got some mailbag. It's going to be a great episode of the show, including. I'm wide awake. Oh! Oh! Well, yeah, that's a teaser. Teaser. We'll talk a little bit about that news, and if you don't know what we're talking about, welcome to the show. <laughs> it was a long and weekend you know, for me because I honestly didn't didn't sleep. Stayed it, woke the whole time. Your Twitter must have been on fire, Mike. Oh, my mentions. Your oh, mentions. My mentions were burning to the ground. Uh, reminder, FootClanGiveaway.com. You can win a signed Todd Gurley or Lev Bell jersey, so check it out at FootClanGiveaway.com for you to enter. The Ultimate Draft Kit is available for pre-sale right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. That's how you dominate your 2018 draft, plain and simple. I mean, it's how everybody dominated their 2017 draft, so it makes sense. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever punched your draft in the face? Ooh, no. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that. With Ultimate Draft Kit? Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. One one punch. It's like, it's, it's like a... You, you tied the hands behind the back of the draft. And That's, punch him in the face. We're not gentlemen here. No, and you should not be Win the draft. fight. Win the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Win or go home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, today's quick question on the show comes from Marvin E. on our forums, which you can check out at community.thefantasyfootballers.com. Uh, in Dynasty Leagues, who would you rather have? Okay, Dynasty Leagues. Would you rather have Adam Thielen, who is... 27 years old, will be 28 by the time the season starts. Or Jarvis Landry, who is 25 years old, he will be 26 in November. So a couple year, a uh, little more than two year difference there. Who'd you rather have? I've got my answer. Yeah, I have my answer as well, and, and it may be tough to hear for <laughs> well, some people. Then you go first. It's wow. Adam Thielen. Oh, okay. And I, because Jarvis Landry's a stud. He's been a fantasy stud. Uh, the stat of the most receptions through four years. Do I have that correct, Jason? Yes, that is correct. Through the first four years of someone's career, Jarvis has been incredible. But his future is so murky. Traded to the Cleveland Browns. No extension done yet, to my knowledge. So we could have a situation where maybe Jarvis doesn't sign and then he's franchised. We just and the other thing is we don't know who's quarterback is going to be. We don't know who's head coach is going to be. Meanwhile, Adam Thielen it signed a, a, an extension last year, so he's still riding through that. And he has Kirk Cousins, a quarterback coming off of three straight years over 4,000 yards, coming in to lead his offense. Things are just are set up on a silver platter for Adam Thielen despite the age difference, despite Adam Thielen being an undrafted free agent. This, this is fantasy football, and things have turned 
in the favor of Adam Thielen. You play to win the game. Exactly. And if this was if you're talking about Larry Fitzgerald, you have me thinking, right? But this is a two just a little over two years. You shouldn't gap. really be thinking well, that would be an easy Jarvis and, Landry. Right. But uh, my point is this is that the gap isn't large enough to justify age determining the pick. And if you take age out of the equation and you look at this year and you look at next year and what the table what's set up on the table for him, it's Adam Thielen. Plain and simple. And so that's my pick as well. Both our Facebook and Instagram fans agreed on Adam Thielen. So the real question is, does Jason? Uh, the, you know, I, I know that we said as a lie that this came in from the community forums, but I know the truth, Brooks. This ca- <laughs> You were snooping on my computer because I actually was pressed into this exact situation. The Jarvis Landry owner in our Dynasty League was trying to flip Adam Thielen uh, in a in a trade, so I was working and and trying to decide who do I want, and it wasn't close. I I'm a contending team. I've got a good roster, and I would not want Jarvis Landry anywhere near as much as I would want Adam Thielen, even with age factored in. However, I will say this: that if I was a rebuilding team and my team was, you know, I'm inheriting uh, a garbage franchise where look, I'm not going to win this year. Probably not going to win next year then Jarvis Landry is actually a player I would probably go target and I might find him more valuable because he's not going to cost as much to acquire Jarvis Landry as it I will cost. I disagree. Oh, I, can, I can promise you. I, I mean, disagree that the – Well, 80, the vote was heavy. It was Adam Thielen 78%. So the vote says Jason's right about that. The cost of Adam Thielen is going to be higher than Landry because 78% of people agree. Now that Landry has gone to the Browns, all those questions, the quarterback questions, the franchise question – his value is at an all-time low, and now's when you can get him and, and hope and pray that he plays one season and bolts. Don't right. franchise Jarvis, Cleveland. I might have buried the lead here, guys. Do you realize that our nickname Volume 3 shirt is now available at shopballers.com? I realized. I told you I haven't slept a this whole is, weekend. Yeah, you've been awake. All. I mean, this shirt has sketched renditions of all of the 2017 most famous nicknames, including Krampus mm. and Devin S. Scrumptious, which, uh... <laughs> You're looking for the drop? I am. Oh! I like how Krampus snuck his way in there. I mean, Krampus was around for like two weeks. Yeah, like, Hey, well, same with Blake the Snake. Oh, but that... Oh, come it's on. not it's how long hot. it, it it's lasts. How powerful. It's how powerful the name is. And uh, about That's 12 other I names. Hear. So check it out, shopballers.com, if you want to get in on the nickname Volume 3 shirt. Uh, shout out to D. Duncan Creative on Instagram. He designed the shirt for us. And without further ado, you know what? We're overdue for one of these. Let's oh. do this. Review Asaurus Rex. This one comes in from Shane Mac 11 titled... <laughs> Blake the Snake. Of course. I got a snake, man. There you go. One of the best and entertaining fantasy podcasts out there. My new go-to source for all things fantasy football. And I get a good laugh out of it as well. Bonus. Wait. Shane Max says right, Shane. We're, Shane, we're one of the best. Ridiculous. How dare you, well, Shane no, Mack. He followed my new go-to source. All, yeah, right. all, right. all right. Not run from. Go-to. I mean, you have to understand, Mike. The best is still one of the best, right? Right. I mean, pizza is, well, let's yes. say you say pizza is the best food. You would still have to say pizza is one of the best foods. Right. Uh, but, but it's kind of an insult. Yeah. I but, see what you're saying. But if I'm coming if I'm coming strong with that five-star review, which we thank you all so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Shane. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, Shane. This is very nice. Hey, oh, yeah, thanks. I very still thank kind. you for this review, but. I mean, we're definitely against you, but. I mean, you, you got to come hard and say the all caps. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, keeping it humble here. Um, thank you for your review, uh, Shane Mac 11 And you can leave us a review on iTunes, wherever you listen. We always appreciate it. Let's talk fantasy football news. News and notes from around the league. A surprisingly large amount of stuff has happened, so it's I'm excited the second wave. to talk about it. Yeah, you have a, a number of additional free agency signings, including the headliner. Um, no! Is it really? Yes, it is. All right. Colts have re-signed Kristen Michael to a one-year deal. When Mike read this off in the studio, it was like late Friday afternoon. The Earth Thursday shook. afternoon. 
The, the, with, like, Under my feet. The, the animals outside went completely quiet <laughs> <laughs> to recognize the greatness of the woke one. Kristen Michael C. Mike. Is there any chance? Let's get to reality here. Is there any chance Kristen Michael has a role in this backfield? Yes. There is. I will say, and like I'm the I'm the eternal optimist for Kristen Michael, but I would I put it down to about ten percent. But there is a legit chance that Kristen Michael is the leader of this backfield <laughs> with Marlon Mack as the if it was the auxiliary. I, piece. I do think that if it was Kristen Michael and Marlon Mack, and that was it, and they don't add anybody, that Kristen Michael would be more the first and second down back. He would be the leader of the backfield per se. But would you say everything the, out of Indianapolis is? Uh, Everyone's expecting them to add another back. Through That's why the they're going to zag, Jason. Yeah, maybe. Right to the woke one. Oh. All right. Chris and Michael would replace this next player. Frank Gore, one-year deal with hometown Miami. Jason is Jason fish, fish pumping. I'm he's squeezing. He I'm loves squeezing. Frank Gore. It's not that I love Frank Gore. It's I feel like I am squeezing every last drop out of the Frank Gore rag in Dynasty, I thought I was going to have to cut him two years ago. At he least would be. call him a handkerchief or something, a rag? Well, I don't want to squeeze he's stuff out of, of a, a handkerchief. He's kind of what, there's boogers in a handkerchief. <laughs> a rag, but a rag's got doo-doo in it. What? Are you wiping? No, no, Off of the rag. floor. Oh, no way. I, look. In my all house. Right. Brooks, <laughs> is, <laughs> Brooks, is Brooks, is Brooks, just <laughs> answer me one simple question, Brooks. I'll make it easy for you. Do you wipe with a rag or a handkerchief? A or B? Go with the handkerchief. I'm okay. not saying... I'm All right. not well, a- look, the Frank Gore sponge... <laughs> it has not replaced TP. The, the Frank Gore sponge... Terrell Pryor? <laughs> ...has a little bit of uh, moisture in it still, and uh, okay. I'm going to get a I'm gonna get a flex start or two out of oh, him in my, my dynasty gosh. So league. Frank Gore to the Dolphins, adding to the fact that I still believe the Dolphins are going to be one of the worst fantasy-producing teams and worst team. Look, who do you want? Who do you want in Miami on, on, on your fantasy roster? Kenyon Drake. I think Frank Gore signing is... The best mm. case scenario Ooh. for Kenyon Drake. I uh, really do because they they were never so happy with... you want with, Kenyon Drake? Yes. You want him on your team? Yes, I do. I think Kenyon Drake is a... Uh, Kenny. Uh, yeah, Ken, Kenny Stills is the I want receiver. Kenny Stills on my think, best ball team. I think you guys are proving my point. Oh, oh no. I, it's, we're, it's we're rough. It's rough the in the Dolphins. Miami streets right now. Yes. Uh, the Jets have agreed to terms with TP oh. himself. Terrell Pryor. Oh, he's back. Man, this has been... For the nicknames and and this We're show's uh, ability to entertain, uh, Kristen Michael and now Terrell Pryor back, signed by the Jets, tons of opportunity. This could be a lot like – I think he, it's a great sign. Yeah, it's, it, it's like it was in Cleveland. It's he a, could be a centerpiece of it, the offense. And, and you've got Josh McCown. It's Are you low gonna risk again? <laughs> no. Am I going to do no, this again? The Terrell Pryor uh, No, no, no. I'm not hyping him up. I'm just saying for the Jets, this, is a, this was a great signing, a low risk – you get Terrell Pryor for Do you know a year the money on this deal? Does anybody know the? No, I was just looking it up on Spotrek, and they still do not have information on it. Okay, it cannot be very much. Well, he was in talks with Seattle as well, and we don't know. You know, the, look, there's always o- over under six million dollars. I'll take the under. I'll take the over if we're talking both years. Uh, I thought it was a one year. Is is it more than a one year deal? Is it two? Uh, I, I'm only seeing the one. Mm. Yeah, I, I, th- I thought track. it was a one-year deal. I'm going to say yeah. $6 million. That's my guess. Well, you All can't. Right. You said over-under $6.5, uh, then. I'll take the over. All right. All right, the Cowboys. This is an interesting signing. They have picked up Alan Hearns, formerly of the Jags, who, were, who was cut last week. Two-year, $12 million deal, ironically, $6 million yep. per year. And then uh, Deontay uh, Thompson, well, the, also the, signed by the Cowboys. The Hearns signing was after the Deontay Thompson signing, which – now makes the Deontay Thompson signing just seem really, they really need bad. Depth. The depth chart right right now in Dallas was going to be before the signing. It was Dez and Beasley and it hurt and Terrence, Terrence Williams. Williams. Yeah, I mean you have depth. I prefer in fantasy football to just ignore the existence of Terrence Williams. That's perfectly that fine. That seems the appropriate but, decision. And, and Ryan Switzer. It just it was. The, the signing of Hearns I thought was fantastic for Dallas. It just it stinks that Switzer you would. Switzer and Beasley aren't needed. going outside, and Terrence Williams is recovering from a broken foot and questionable for even the offseason program. Yeah, exactly. I was going to bring that up about the foot, but I, I also think the Thompson signing is good from a standpoint of they don't really have a speed guy. They, yeah, they do. Alan Hearns. I don't see him. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I guess right. I, I post. Alan Hearns seems more of a full route tree, fill the outside, compete with Terrence Williams. Deontay Thompson's depth. 
downfield, Bryce Butler replacement. That's how it looks to me. But Alan Hearns, let's talk about him. If Dez is beyond his prime, which I think I, I think I might even have you guys both agreeing with that. No, okay. I do not agree with that. Well, well we're majority. Statistically now. agreed with it. Um, if Dez is kind of, and right now they haven't even talked to him about a contract yet. There's still a chance that they go wide receiver in the first round and Dez Bryant is getting pushed towards the door. That would be just but regardless, poor football decisions. Alan Hearns, does he win the outside job? Yes, Alan Hearns will be the starter. It'll be Desmond. I think there's a lot of people who think that Ter- Terrence Williams has that job right now, and Alan Hearns has to fight him off. No, I I say the contract it puts Alan Hearns in the driver's seat. And I it. would also add that the talent puts yes. Alan Hearns in the driver's seat. Yeah, and Brooks, that makes you feel good as a, as a Dallas fan, doesn't it? Oh yeah, the <laughs> Terrence Williams deal was four years, seventeen million. So, well, the, that was a mistake. Well, I, I agree, <laughs> but you're acting like oh, the yeah. money for Hearns meant that Williams wouldn't be able to compete i think they there was a clerical error Mm -hmm. and terrence williams somehow got that contract how'd you like to be the eagles you've replaced tory smith with mike wallace a one-year 2.5 million dollar contract and an upgrade stop helping the eagles oh is this change from a stop helping the pats to a it's all of it it's ridiculous i mean the the moves that they were able to get a repeat super bowl without helping those two teams if (laughs) the the circular logic of, of moving pieces that they've been able to do that eventually turned into changing Torrey Smith into Mike Wallace, who's been far more productive. He's way than cheaper Smith for them. And is way cheaper. I mean, hats off, Philadelphia. I think this is insurance if Matt Collins doesn't develop, too. This is, yeah. you've got another, you got a veteran piece there. Someone who can still, probably can't, he can't stretch the field like he used to. Well, he really can't. He's still fast. With, yeah, he is. When you he's look at next fast. gen stats, last yes. year he was faster than Torrey Smith. Yes. So they they literally upgraded the speed over Torrey Smith. <clears throat> well, they didn't exactly capitalize on Torrey Smith's speed last year either. So those are two guys aging downfield. The Jags have re-signed Corey Grant. So this is just them signing him signing yes. the tender. Correct. So one year deal for the Jaguars. Somebody to pay attention to. Deep deep pick, dynasty pick. Yep. Seahawks re-signed Mike Davis to a one year deal. It's interesting. So right now we have Chris Carson and Mike Davis heading up the backfield. Uh, it was it was interesting that they uh, chose not to tender Mike Davis. I mean they won because they didn't tender him and they've re-signed him. But he would he would be the backup to Chris Carson if if Seattle doesn't do anything right now. In my opinion, you also know that uh, Demarco Murray visited Seattle and then they ended up signing Mike Davis to a one year contract. So they must have felt that that was a better decision for their yep. depth probably going to draft somebody damian williams signs with the chiefs one year 1.5 million dollar deal jason i can't remember you used to say something specific <laughs> about damian williams what was it exactly he, uh, yeah i think uh damian williams sucks oh he's it's just, upgraded i was gonna say it used to be wow stinks. okay well i brooks, apologize to mrs he, williams brooks do you have the r-rated ver- is it, are we <laughs> itunes r-rated no yeah this is explicit okay <laughs> this uh, this is also why i i think that uh, look, Kenyon Drake, he's got Damian Williams out of the way, and the only guy there is Frank Gore Right as of right now. That's why I like Kenyon Drake with, with Damian Williams. Gone. Now, Damian Williams moving over uh, to the Kansas City Chiefs, this is nothing but a, a depth move, a special teams yes. move. Damian Williams was not as bad on special teams. I wonder if Kenyon Drake is calling Marlon Mack right now saying, dude, dude, what's going to happen? Are they just going to give first and second down to Gore no matter what? Yeah, probably. Uh, all right, battle for the backup role. Drew Stanton, Brock Osweiler. Stanton goes to the Browns. Osweiler to the Dolphins. Who would you rather have as your backup? Stanton. <laughs> I would much. Ra- I I've spoke poorly about Drew Stanton before, but if I'm if I've got a backup, but I if want you're someone- in a two story house and you need to wallpaper really know, high, man. oh Brock Osweiler okay. for sure. So, but I mean, which one of them would you rather have? on the sideline while you've got a player running down Drew scores Stanton. touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a historic Drew, level Drew Stanton sideline for sure, but cheerleading. I mean, this is just baffling. Honestly, this is baffling to me by the Cleveland Browns. We talked about it in the office. So I didn't convince you with my argument? No. I think it, I, not at all because the, you have you, – you traded a third for Tyrod Taylor, who is allegedly your starter. You're going to draft a quarterback at the 101 – and you have Kevin Hogan, which whatever, and you have Cody Kessler. But I'm just saying, you have signed Drew Stanton. If the contract, 
is this is a guarantee. Move. You're just you're saying okay, we are absolutely moving forward with Hol- a, with three quarterbacks. Hogan yes. and Kaiser are gone. They've got two veterans there to well, Kaiser's already gone. You mean Kevin? Or, yes, Kessler. Yes, Kessler. yeah. This is a, a a locker room move. This is to get a veteran who's been around other professional quarterbacks in the locker room. He's a better backup than Kessler. He's a better backup than Hogan. It's fine. But, but we should not talk about it anymore on a fantasy your, football show. Your backup is the 101. That's who your backup is. That's fine. Drew Stanton is is he's jiving in the locker room. He's telling jokes. He's keeping people loose. <laughs> I'm not wasting a roster spot for Drew Stanton jokes. Can we? Get, oh, they have plenty. Brooks, plenty when, of when burner Stan, roster spots. When Stanton is done <laughs> in Cleveland, would you mind calling him and seeing if he wants to come in here? I could use him to liven up uh, things around here. <laughs> Most teams Mike's make wearing that. his you're, black T-shirt Andy, all morose. You're, you're getting it today. Oh, That's man. right. Give like give giving you a shoulder massage. Martellus you Bennett. Want me to has, get you a hot towel, Andy? Martellus Bennett has retired from the National Football League. Oh, goes out a champion. Yeah. Um, lastly, well, goes out a goes out a champion. That is correct. What a champion runner up. Is that was that what you mean? No. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Andy, yes, who won is. the Super yes, Bowl, my friend? <laughs> uh, well, you? Are you going to blame me for a mag- – it uh, it's always the Patriots, right? I am going to blame you 100% okay. for that. Yes, because I do a fantasy football show. <laughs> More importantly, we don't know anything else about this, and big news could break by uh, tomorrow morning. We don't really know. But Ian Rappaport is talking uh, about Odell Beckham Jr., he has come out and said that he will not set foot on a field without a new contract. There have been rumors about the Giants preferring to sign him to a contract versus trading him, but there have also been rumors about the Rams right now, according to multiple NFL sources, already in talks with the Giants about possibly trading for Odell Beckham Jr. <sighs> Be what are you doing, New York? Sign Odell Beckham, but doesn't draft it, a quarterback at the number two, and have a future. I think that there – here's the uh, – and I'm losing the analogy here. The cog in the wheel, the uh, the stick in the wheel. Okay. What makes the wheel not roll smoothly? Uh, yeah, a stick in the spokes would do it. Okay. But I've never heard that as a, like a freeze. Okay, we're gonna stay stay there though. Okay, the stick in the spokes, as they say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is the video that came out featuring Odell Beckham Jr. and yeah. the fact that there have been some off the field questions that their ownership has had to answer about Beckham. So you have that variable mixed with the injury recovery, mixed with the r- young quarterback. Let's say it takes the quarterback two or three years to develop. I can see a world where they are looking at it and saying, let's get rid of the headache. Let's get rid of the money, the cap hit. Let's build for the future. Now, look, none of that logic is actually going to come to bear when you have a trade. They're going to get not – they're never going to get Odell Beckham Jr. back. That's the problem. But I still think the trade could happen based on those reasons. I mean, they missed an opportunity here. Instead of the Cleveland Browns, if New York just would have brought Drew Stanton in, he could have shored up that locker room. Could have cleaned it right up. Got Odell Beckham back on track. Told some funny jokes. (laughs) Odell. It's more than that. Odell, you got to stop, man. It's sage advice. You got to. Listen, I'm Drew Stanton. Nobody has more high kicks. Nobody (laughs) has more brain cells remaining than backup quarterbacks. That's so And therefore, they can give very sage advice and wisdom. Uh, speaking of wisdom, support for today's show comes from Squarespace. Are you ready to start your new business? Make it stand out with Squarespace. Look, if you haven't heard about Squarespace, I don't know where you've been, but when you have an idea, when you need to get on the web, they are exactly where you need to be. Squarespace.com. Beautiful templates created by world-class designers that make it easy to turn that idea into a website. You can showcase your work, your blog, you can publish content, you can sell products, whatever you need to do. On the web, Squarespace is your one-stop solution, and it's optimized for mobile right out of the box. That's so big. I know our website. Half the users are mobile users, so you need to be able to be compatible with mobile devices. You can use their analytics to help you grow in real time. They have 24-7 customer support. They make it easy. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code FOOTBALLER. That's footballers to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com. Offer code is footballers. And we want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's show, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, and speaking of a lead that was missed, Andy Holloway, the fearless leader of the show, it was, he was a birthday boy uh-huh. yesterday. That's true. And Jason and I said, 
what the heck are we going to get a, a man who's only his age but is also very, very old at the exact same time? And I said, well, let's get, him a, let's get him a signed Kurt Warner jersey. Where in the world can we find that? I found one on Where? pristineauction.com. $10,000? Nope. We got it for a smoking deal. Speaking of a smoking deal, on the wall right now, a brand new Alvin Kamara signed jersey. I never worry about the signatures. They are always authentic on pristine auction. You can find new young players like uh, Corey Davis signed jersey. $36. What? Yeah. I know. They're just <laughs> they're giving them away at pristineauction.com. Hey, you're talking the GOAT. Jerry Rice, he, his jersey pops up from time to time autographed you can check this out and hundreds and hundreds of daily auctions uh, at pristine auction p-r-i-s-t-i-n-e auction.com you make a completely free account you let them know what the fantasy fantasy footballer sent you you are going to have a fantastic time all right the main event we're going to jump into our uh, main segment today we're going to talk about players recovering from injury players that are back from injury and players that you might have forgotten also, by the way, there's a show after the show today on YouTube. Oh. Yeah. So don't miss out on that. But let's jump into the injuries. I'm fine. <laughs> totally fine. I, I don't know why it's coming out all loud and squeaky, because really, I'm fine. I'm fine, guys. The laugh I'm track fine. in there. Yeah. That's Very a, nice. That's a live studio audience. That's friend. true. Yeah. Thank you, studio. <laughs> Just reacting. Just reacting to the comedy. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about some of these players. This kind of this segment was inspired by a question off of Twitter. Who was injured early in 2017 that we might forget about in 2018? And that is the key point because those are players that oftentimes slip down the draft board. Your average draft position, your ADP of those players ends up being a lot lower than maybe they sh where they should be, right? Definitely. Uh, a lot of times when a player gets injured, they miss the entire season. That's one, it's it's best case scenario for their health versus the guys that you saw for three quarters of a season and got injured. But two, because they missed that season and you haven't seen them back from the injury yet, a lot of times the, you're talking double digit rounds for these guys or maybe even undrafted for some of these guys. You can have a lot of value. This is where you could kind of swing for the fences. And if if you grab a guy, you know, late in those double digit rounds who might just be healthy and ready to come back you'll know week one whether he's back or whether he doesn't look the same. We're going to start at the wide receiver position, and the headliner here is Julian Edelman because he was injured very early in the year, a torn ACL. That Before was in, they even started. That was in preseason week three, that's right. And the expectation right now, he's 31 years old, but the Patriots are expecting him back and to be fully healthy for week one. What do we have to look forward to with Edelman, and what do we have to worry about with Edelman, and where do you guys have him compared to maybe the consensus? I'll, I'll give you some numbers. I want to give you some target share numbers from Julian Edelman uh, going back to when he really became Jules, the yeah. Jules of the Patriots, mm -hmm. Julian Edelman, mm -hmm. 2013, 25%, 14, 25%, 15, 24%. 2016, it shot way up because this was the, the absence of Gronk, but up to 29%. So since he became a thing back in 2013, he was getting at least 24% of the target share. Julian Edelman, he's putting out videos. By the looks of the videos of his his workout videos, he's feeling pretty strong. I mean, this was before the season even started. That There's plenty of time for him to come back from the ACL injury, I think, despite his age. My real question for Julian Edelman uh, is more of what does he do to the offense as a whole? Because you had Brandon Cooks, who was – he had some inconsistency, but for a stretch, Brandon Cooks was extremely hot. You have, you have Chris Hogan. You have Chris Hogan, who was a beast before he got hurt. What does the – if you reinsert Julian Edelman and his target share into the into this offense, what does it do for the rest of the pieces as well as does Julian Edelman go right back to a 24 25% share? I, I think you're going to see Julian Edelman right at the you know 20% share mark. Maybe not as high as it was, but he's going to go back to being the possession guy, the, the slot receiver that can break out, can break in on a slant and move the chains. 
I mean, we've we've seen in the past, right? Grunt goes down, and then all of a sudden, Danny Amendola is unfathomably important to this offense right. because they were missing Julian Edelman and that role. Well, Danny Amendola is gone, and while you might have you know Chris Hogan back, and you you've got Cooks, those are not the same type of possession players. Those are outside, you know, stretch the field type of guys. And I think Julian Edelman comes back from what I looked at regarding his health and those workout videos you you showed. I think he's going to have a great age 31 season. And I have some really going to be a value in the draft. Okay, so let's put that to the test. I have three names that I want to hear who you like more, Edelman or these guys, okay? Let's start here. Let's go Edelman or Michael Crabtree, who just went to Baltimore, might end up the number one in Baltimore. Edelman. Edelman. Okay, let's go Pierre Garçon in San Francisco mm. with Jimmy GQ. That's tough. That is. Would you rather have Garçon or Edelman this year? I, I I, I th think I would lean Edelman. Yeah, I do too. That's where I was going. Interesting. How about uh, let me let me see here. Let's go Golden Tate. Oh, Tate. Would you rather have Tate in Detroit, or would you rather have Julian Edelman coming back from injury? That's very very close. I lean Golden Tate. I just wanted to throw out uh, Matthew Betts. He's one of our writers. He is a, a he does he's an orthopedic physical therapist, and he let us know that the thing to watch out for. Uh, guys of his age and who are a little bit smaller coming off the ACL, they have an increased risk of soft tissue injuries. So keep your eye. If Edelman gets pulls up with a hamstring injury drop him in, in training camp, that's going to be a, a situation where he will drop a, a large amount in yeah. my rankings. I mean, you, you, he, he brought this up, but you saw it last year with Danny Woodhead. You know, he's coming back, you know, yep. similar age and, and issue. And when he pulled up with a hamstring, couldn't get over it to the point where you go on season-ending IR from soft tissue issues. All right. Uh, Edelman or Hogan? Same team. Oh, Ooh. that's great. I think I'm going to go with Edelman. I would go with Edelman because I, I believe he will. Man, I, who do you think gets drafted first between those two? I feel like Chris Hogan would I, go ahead. I believe of, it will be Chris Hogan, but that's Edelman's draft price is going to be very interesting to watch because he was I mean, he had finally gotten the respect where he was drafted where he should be for his fantasy value, but I mean he could drop what sixth round. He could end up like that Steve Smith v uh, value right. from years ago. He by the way, every single name I just compared is going ahead of Julian Edelman in current drafts. Yeah, I mean, right now... Because there's Edelman's a forgetfulness to it. There are people who don't even realize he's there. When we were going through our mock draft, I think we kind of started looking inside. Oh, let's yeah. go this direction. Let's go that. Let's not go with Julian. I, I, I believe I got Julian Edelman in the ninth round in a best ball league. It's, wow. it's great. Nice. That's All right. Bad. Let's go to another uh, player who's been very productive, has a new quarterback, Emmanuel Sanders. 31 years old. Had uh, He's still under contract, both Edelman and Sanders, through 2019 under contract. Last year, it was tough to stay healthy for Emmanuel Sanders. He missed week seven, week eight. Then he also missed week 16 and 17. He was short of 1,000 yards for the first time in four years. And this was not your prototypical Emmanuel Sanders year. You had problems at quarterback mixed with injury. Um, the latest report I have from February 23rd is that his ankle is about 95%. Which is about five percent lower than I'd like to see. Right. <laughs> yeah. But is his time is he going to be the same player this year with Case Keenum, or does he have the chance to be? I, I I think he does have the chance to be. I you know going through this list, I'm not rosy outlooked on everybody, but I, I think Emmanuel Sanders. There's almost no way unless he's done right. If Emmanuel Sanders, he's just lost it, and I don't think this ankle injury is going to you know destroy him he didn't look poor to me on tape uh, his quarterback play was the issue unless his career is pretty much over I don't see how he's not an excellent draft day value he has been over a thousand yards I believe the four previous Three. seasons leading up to that and uh, you know you, I mean he's he's got a huge upgrade to me at quarterback we'll see what they do in the draft they, they're in prime position to upgrade their offensive line as well uh, I think Emmanuel Sanders is going to fall like a uh, a, a rock, a cinder block in draft, a cinder block of candy that you would enjoy to devour. <laughs> sure, <laughs> enjoy to devour, as they always say. Uh, and, Sanders and, and Demarius Thomas are one round apart in drafts right now. Would you take the lower of the two, or would you just take Demarius? 
I would. S- I take Demarius. I would still prefer Demarius if if they are in fact that close. And just want to bring up since 2012, so 2012 to 2016, he missed one game. So this is Emmanuel Sanders is not should not be labeled with an injury prone type of situ uh, uh, label. And I I'm with Jason watching Emmanuel Sanders play last year. He looked perfectly fine to me despite being 31 years old. This segment might need to be retitled, Brooks. I think it's going to be 31-year-old receivers because I'm going to (laughs) move to Pierre Garçon, who is coming off of a neck injury. He played eight games last year. He averaged eight and a half fantasy points per game, a little more than that, but he missed weeks 9 through 17, missed the great Jimmy GQ era. No handsome time. In San Francisco, no handsome time for Pierre Garçon. What do we think about Pierre Garçon this year? Because, you know, him, Sanders, Edelman, well, they're very be... similar. They're all possession-oriented guys, great hands, uh, key cogs to the offense when they're healthy. Yeah, I mean, the way that I look at that is Pierre Garçon will be 32 coming up this year. Um, and, you know, they signed him on this long-term contract. But now there's other there's other options there. You know, Marquise Goodwin kind of had a nice breakout party with Jimmy GQ. And... I am less confident in a 32-year-old Pierre Garçon who never really played, in in my opinion, to the level that, level that Emmanuel Sanders did, other than when he had you know Peyton Manning um, at, at quarterback. So I I would much prefer the so Emmanuel wait, Sanders route than you, the Pierre Garçon route. You think Pierre Garçon only played to the best of his ability when he had Peyton Manning? Are you think, are you describing I, Garcon or Emmanuel Sanders right now? No, I think Emmanuel Sanders played well without Peyton Manning. I would take Garcon as the potential one in a Jimmy GQ offense and Sanders as the guaranteed two in the Case Keenum offense. I don't think See, that's a guarantee. Yeah, two. I don't either. They, Emmanuel Sanders has shown himself to be a a, a one there over yeah. the last few years. Brooks, Garcon, Sanders. Sanders, easy. Easy. Oh, how be, easy, guys! Fire. No, how easy? I'm not putting a bet on the board just just yet about this. So none of you are confident. I'll that take the- it. Water bet. Pierre Garcon did average eight targets a game in Kyle Shanahan's offense. He looked so that's great. Pretty delightful. He looked great last year, and um, we know how Kyle Shanahan gets. He yep. likes his his certain players. Yep. All right. Uh, let's let's throw a couple of younger names out here. Let's talk about John Ross. <laughs> Who? Uh, Good luck. John Ross, he finished the year with negative fantasy points. <laughs> it's hard to do. They said it couldn't be done. Another way to put that would be Jason scored more fantasy points than John Ross. It's last just year. a he was, fact. He was a top 10 pick in the NFL draft, and your team bodied him. What are you doing, Cincinnati? Well, the good news is Marvin Lewis is, is back. So oh, fantastic. John Ross is just 23 years old, and... Well, he, he sprained his left knee in the team's preseason finale. He came back uh, to, I believe, run a reverse for lost yardage. And he fumbled. Then he never, he fumbled. Yeah. Oh, yes, and then he never played again. Well, he fumbled, so Marvin Lewis has to send a message. Well, there, says there, you, you can't fumble. It might have been the right message in this one case because it was revealed that John Ross was hiding some injuries from the team in an effort to get back, never got back on the field. What is... The opportunity for John Ross. It's so interesting. I just I want to speak to that point real quick of the team being mad that he's hiding injuries because he's trying to get back on the field. But then there's guys who will play through an injury and they're awesome. They're tough. They gritted it out through the injury. That's exactly what he was trying to do. Well, they weren't mad at him for trying to do that. He wasn't succeeding in doing that. Therefore, he was being a bad player. Therefore, they didn't. They thought he wasn't living up to potential when it might have been attributed to injury. He obviously has. He was the combine darling last year, and that got him drafted too high. But can he be a, a viable compliment to A.J. Green, or are we all just wasting our time with him in Dynasty Leagues? Uh, d- definitely not in Dynasty Leagues. I think long-term he could he could be something there. There's just a lot of mouths to feed. That, like you know, a they, Tavon they, Austin or like a, you know, They re-signed superstar. You know, Tyler Eifert. Obviously, A.J. Green is the one. Then you have LaFell back. You've got... Uh, uh, Tyler Bo- Boyd. I believe LaFell is under contract still. You can I'm gonna verify, verify that. But I'm I mean, going to lean on the not back. Yeah, I've, last I remember, Brandon LaFell was going to be a free agent. You still have Tyler Boyd there. You have a, a, <laughs> the guy I just traded for and Josh Malone, who was still a relatively high draft pick uh, a couple years ago for a wide receiver. 
So I think he, he is back. Jason is right on that one. He's getting a $1 million roster bonus. Oh. He received it on March 18th. So well, then, then Brandon LaFell is back. Then John Ross, I think, is a talented player. I really do. I think he's got an opportunity. And we haven't been, you know, his negative season did not pr disprove his talent as a football player. Right. But it's where is the opportunity going to come? I don't think he's going to have enough opportunity this year to be super relevant. But in a dynasty league, maybe you can buy him cheap then. Okay, so After that's the consensus. Week. You're not excited about him in fantasy? No. Not this year. All right, running backs. I want to talk about some running backs coming back off of injury. I think the big one that made the biggest impact that I, I, I think the injury will hurt his ADP is Chris Thompson. 27 years old, fractured fibula, which is, you know, of all the injuries to have, give me a fractured fibula over a torn ACL, over a, a significant uh, knee issue. Yeah. And he played 10 games. He averaged 13.2 fantasy points per game in half point per reception leagues. And he says he's going to be ready for training camp. Chris Thompson, it, it, does his injury add to the reality that he's never going to be featured to the degree that he needs to be for uh, fantasy reliability? Yes, not only because of the you know just saying oh he's always injury prone and so he might be injured again in the future but the fact that 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 team the Redskins themselves they have to manage his touches his body is not built to take 15 touches a game and that's that's total touches you know I'm talking you know 10 carries and five receptions a game he probably can't handle that now from what I've heard uh, Byron Marshall is loved there as another pass cap catching option so he could actually eat into some of Chris Thompson's value if they're trying to uh, alleviate the workload there but he, he was certainly electric I just don't believe that he's going to be able to handle the load uh, for 16 games well here's the, the issue with Chris Thompson I think he's a sensational player and with Jason that he just can't stay on the field but however two years ago 6.9 yards per reception one year ago 7.1 exact same ballpark he jumps to 13.1 yards per reception he, something something smells like an outlier that would be an outlier for anyone so well, and he, he was going to if he could have played the last eight weeks it would have returned to a lower number too it but it still would have been extremely high because he had broken off so many huge chunk plays it, it, this was this was the the year of his career Chris so. Thompson okay or LeGarrette Blunt in Detroit. <laughs> Man, I'll take the upside uh, if Chris Thompson, but, but the draft cost is going to factor into that so much. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll probably take LeGarrette Blunt in those he double digit cheaper. rounds. Right, yeah. Uh, Deion Lewis in Tennessee or Chris Thompson? Oh, Deion Lewis. Lewis. I'll pay up for a player that I believe in. All right. All right. Staying in Washington, Rob Kelly coming off the high ankle sprain, the MCL tear. Any. Anybody uh, that has him in Dynasty, do they have any hope? He's only 25 years old. He's they have two the years same, younger than Chris Thompson. They have the same hope that I had with Frank Gore. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you get lucky and yeah. he just ends up by default having a job. But right now, does anybody believe that he's going to be the starting running the back? The hope of a slightly sweaty rag? Is that the hope that... <laughs> sponge. I, we landed on Sponge. I don't oh, believe okay. that Rob Kelly will be the starter... But there is certainly a world where I see that happening. Yeah, I mean, right. you can't forget about him. You, you certainly can't. Absolutely can. cannot. It, it, they apparently seemed to really like him in his uh, plotting ways oh, in Washington. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Joyke Bell trumpet or trombone for sure. Uh, Deontay Foreman, 21 years old. There we tore go. Tore the Achilles. Missed weeks 12 through 17. Tore the Achilles on an incredible run that secured a game for Houston uh, midseason. What do we know about the Achilles injury? What do we know about his health? And what is the ceiling for Deontay Foreman, exciting young running back? Yeah, I loved Deontay Foreman coming out of college. He looked like he was about to have his breakout and then had this injury. This injury has shown historically that it, it, it does impact players. Their fantasy value comes down. The length of their career is a little bit shortened. But he is still so young. I mean, he's 21 years old. They're hoping that he's ready for the offseason program and ready to go week one. I believe because of this injury that and the fact that they are short draft picks in this year's draft because of the Deshaun Watson uh, moves, that Lamar Miller will be on the roster. He will open up as the starter because of this injury. 
But they will give him every chance. If, if he recovers from this injury, he can overtake that and be the starter with Deshaun Watson on a powerful offense. We saw glimmers of stardom, I thought, last year. The thing about Lamar Miller is we all know one reality, and he's not going to wow you this year. He may be reliable, but he's not going to do anything to wow you. Those days – are long gone. He hasn't wowed you in two seasons in it's Houston. It's like when you open up the bag of chips. So the bag stock. of chips is full. Right. You, until you open it, mm. and then it, you go, it, it's half empty. It's all air. Yeah. Lamar Miller. The air smells good, but it's not chips. That's true. And, I've, uh, I've tried to eat the air. I don't man, like Is there anything better things. than fresh chips? Oh. The bag I feel like you're freshly in, opened. So, like, as the resident over the last three years, Lamar Miller uh, guy. Yes. I feel like what's happening right now is people are insulting my mother, but I know they're right. <laughs> like, I can't see You're right. Anything. She's hideous. <laughs> <laughs> she is large. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Lamar Miller, I think he'll be there. I, I'm with you on that. So let's talk about uh, – let's let's move down the line here. I, I want people to remember C.J. Procise. Now, it's hard to remember him. He does everything he can to get you to forget him because he missed weeks 4, 5, 8, 9, placed on IR for 8, 11 through 17. Come on, CJ. They want to use him. They cannot possibly believe that they can. Though. I think they uh, – 23 years old? Uh, no, you're, you're right. They probably can't. Chris Carson on that same roster, 23 years old. That's the name to remember, Missed truly. 5 through 17. So you have Carson, Davis, and Procise. Are we, are, is it more of the same from the Seattle backfield this year? Eileen, Which yes. Is, I mean, what's the best case scenario? I mean, that they sign somebody, no. or I mean, that they draft somebody and then they're the superstar. I mean, nothing good is going to happen fantasy wise in this backfield. The best case scenario is Chris Carson takes over the job and CJ Pro size stays healthy to be the passing downs back. Chris Carson did look good when he he was a very short window, but he looked good. He looked good behind this poor offensive line in this system. So they might roll with. If there's one name to remember here, it's not to me. It's not Pro size. Uh, it's Chris Carson. Spencer Ware. Where are you, Spencer Ware? Ooh. Preseason week three, tore the PCL and Spencer LCL. Spencer San Diego. Missed. Oh, it was just. What from, was that from? That was Jason. Where in the world wow. is Spencer San Diego? That's rough. Yeah, it was That's great. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. Jason tried. He's a, a juicy he apple. Tried, he tried his hardest. He's, he's like, when we were doing the footy nominations for best nickname of the, of the year, Jason's like, <laughs> You guys remember uh, where, where Spencer, <laughs> Spencer San, Diego? San Diego? Wow. The people no. loved it. I didn't remember it. Um, <laughs> I believe that nickname has been on IR all, all year as well. 26 years old, still under contract, should be uh, expected back for training camp. Are we forgetting about Spencer Ware? I don't believe so. I think he will be the clear backup to Kareem Hunt. Spencer Ware is a fine player. When given the opportunity, he... He can play well, but but that's the thing is he has to be given the opportunity. He never takes the opportunity. Okay, all right. I just want to throw one more player in there, and that's at the tight end position. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, Rule 86 himself, Jordan Reed, just 27 years old. He'll be 28 going into the year. His contract with Washington lasts so oh, only until 2021. You can't forget about him. Look, I no, I can't. said early in the off season about how I'm done with Jordan Reed, and yet you don't is, want to remember because he is absolutely unable to stay healthy. But the more that I've actually participated in real drafts, I love Jordan Reed as a draft. I mean, if I can get him, literally in the 12th round, I mean, he, people don't want him, and if he pops. Maybe maybe the wrong word to use <laughs> because he could literally he... just explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stuffed. I can't eat anymore. Um, thin way fair. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if he doesn't pop, <laughs> if, if he, he will be good for no, fantasy let's football. Let's just ask that question then. Jordan Reed, 28 years old, presume health for 16 games with Alex Smith in Washington. He ends up the tight end number two. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say, I mean, wow. if you tell me he plays 16, 16 games of Jordan Reed, so they, top three. Look, if, if that's the reality, is, is if Jordan Reed is healthy, he's a top three tight end guaranteed, then he's the name to remember and draft late in drafts. Look, you got to get him. Because you cut your tight end. I mean, my, unless you have Gronk, Ertz, or Kelsey, pretty much, you're willing to cut your tight end every single week if it's a bad matchup and pick someone up off of waivers. So why not just. 
draft a guy with that kind of upside I agree. and cut him if he's if he's injured. All right. Well, let's uh, take a couple of minutes, jump into some listener questions. Mailbag. Bag or bag. Yeah. Oh. Pop. <laughs> pop. Oh. Certain expressions you just don't. Ooh. If you it, that's a dirty don't, pop. Don't even bring it up around him. Mm. Dirty, dirty pop. <laughs> wow. Baby, Love baby, Michael kids. Eldon in Salt Lake City going into his second year with our league, eight team redraft league. With How did a, he get in our league with a snake draft? Eight? Uh, no, not our league. Oh. He's speaking uh, in the first person. Um, how do you determine draft order? Reverse order of standings from last year or random order? Also, does your draft strategy change in smaller leagues like that? Yeah. So you eight go team, ran- snack, snake draft. Uh, how do you determine draft order in the second year? If it's not a keeper league, then I would go random. Right. Which, I know, would too. If it's a keeper league and, and you know people have certain assets and they were from better teams, then I would look at reverse order of standings. You can reward – you could say like a reverse order of standings will reward you with the ability to pick where you want to draft. You know, that might be a fun thing, but I think random is absolutely fine. Completely All right, agree. Jake. And he asked, well, what would we do differently? When it's an eight-teamer, I'm okay, especially, you know, in that second, third round. Third round would be fantastic, but uh, going for a guy like Gronk or Zach Ertz. Difference maker at the position. At the, at the tight end position because they fall off. I'm, st- But I would still go very late and the in, reason, qu- in quarterback because it's even easier to stream. Yeah, the reason for that is because everyone has superstar rosters. I mean, the difference yes. is if you want to win a championship, you've got to have basically pretty much the best at every position. All right. Uh, by the way, if you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB, and you can send in a voicemail question. Jake in Maine with our next question. With Doug Martin signing on the Raiders, I now have three shares of the backups there in Martin, Washington, and Richard. Do any of these guys still have any value in a dynasty format, or should I be looking to move on from one or all of them? I, oh, man. Man, I, I think I would be looking to move on from all of them. I don't believe that Richard or Washington, given what they did with Doug Martin, I, I don't think they have the value to Gruden. I don't think Gruden came, came in and said, hey, we've got some talent here. I think he said, hey, we need to find some talent here. You remember 2015? And they're, they went they're and far signed. too young. Far yeah, too young it, for Gruden's exactly. liking. I, so I I, last year without Doug Martin – Washington and Richard combined for five total double-digit games on the year. That's not good. Out of 32 potential games, five double digits. And now you add Doug Martin. Was one of them Washington? Uh, Or did he have more than one? Washington had two of them. Richard had three of them. And one of those was the week that Marshawn was out and Washington scored a touchdown. Yeah. So. Now this uh, the that one depresses thing I would, me. I was the Richard owner yeah. in our dynasty. I, I, I believed in Richard coming into last year. Yeah, I mean, I I think both those backs are better than the other two at this stage in their careers. I would say one point of caution with our uh, anti-Doug Martin rhetoric, though. This is the actual season. If you look at his... Oh, you're right. The, the, if you look at his career yes. trajectory, he has 1,400 yards, then 400, then 400, then 1,400 yards, then 400, then 400. Science! Then now. Science. Really? Yeah. yeah. So well now I everything. You want to take a guess what yardage he has? Mm, Fourteen hundred maybe. Maybe so Gruden's a genius, that, or or he's just not that good. That's we'll exactly why John Gruden signed him. Yeah, he he's analytical. He, he looked at the historic breakdown. with holy crap! You see what's happening? Doug Martin's about to happen. Doug Martin's lock for fourteen hundred. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. This question comes in off of Instagram. How many years are away are we from only one running back being the standard setup in different formats as opposed to two now? The NFL is going to grow more pass friendly and risk averse while running backs are being deployed more and more as part of a committee. Yeah, there's more running backs you can use. Yeah, I was going to say, I, it's I great. Don't- I, We're at least 50 to 70 years away from this. Uh, I concur. <laughs> what, is that when the robots take over? Uh, no, that's in the that's like 100 years out. Going mm-hmm. one running back is like you might as well at that point just go complete flex. Just get rid of all posi- – you don't have wide Seven receivers. Seven flexes, nothing else. Exactly. And I, and there are leagues that do that. I really don't enjoy them. I, I, you miss the strategy in the draft. and uh, Yeah. Keep I guess that's a good reminder for commissioners and leagues that are starting up. 
if you do something that's really outside cute. the box and cute with your format, that's fine. But you're not going to have the same relatability and discussion and enjoy podcasts the same and discussions with your friends that play in other leagues because you're all playing from a different paradigm. So sometimes it's okay. It's okay to be normal. But did you guys play Base Wars for the NES? No, I didn't it was play a, Base Wars. It was a baseball game. It was all robots. It was <laughs> sensational. I actually do remember that game. Yeah, now. you're darn right. Yeah. It was great, man. The pitcher would, would blast it like a cannon. Yeah. And if yeah. you hit the robot enough, they would blow up. Yeah, I remember. I remember, Mike. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right, that is it for today's episode of the podcast. By the way, show up for the show, available on YouTube. We're going to talk a little bit longer. I'm going to surprise these guys with a few very important Are we questions talking about Base inquiries. Wars? You have no idea what we're talking base about. Base Wars! You can also check out draft.com slash ballers if you want to play some best ball. Jason alluded to it on today's show. Been in some best ball leagues this week. Draft.com slash ballers ballers for best ball thank you for tuning in and we will catch you uh what on thursday another that show is correct oh my goodness correct. it's getting good around here goodbye see you later goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.